Uh, hello, um, everyone. Uh, welcome to Absolute Cuts. Uh, I was going to start with Noddy Holder. Can you do the... It's Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> what? Sorry, what the fuck is this? Do you not know it? Like, Noddy Holder. Noddy, do we do in the, the card? Oh, oh, that's, that's not. Noddy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's an early mayor you're having this week. Right? <laughs> no, uh, I know Slade, yes. Yes. My mum hates Slade. Why? She has a, just a genuine hatred for Slade. Anytime the Christmas, that one song comes on, he's just like, you fucking turn that I shit. I can get that. I mean, because Slade have got some amazing songs, man. Do they? Oh, yeah. Do you know, there's a, there's a bit in that song, right, um, that I remember thinking when I was younger, and I still kind of think it now is one of the best lyrics I've ever heard in a song. Cause I used to think it was so clever, right? Slade. There's a bit where it said, um, the back, there's a bit at the end where um, they fall off the, fall off the, the sleigh, basically. And it's, uh, they say, oh, fuck, right, I'll need to get that, you Phil, I'll need to get it, because I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a tit of myself oh, here. Slade, hanging off, is this going to be, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the greatest ever, I know my favourite ever lyric in a song is Big L. Big L. <laughs> Okay. You know Big L, no? No. Oh, Big L, yeah. Oh, yeah, the rapper. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, He said, uh, ask Beavis to get nothing but head. Yeah. (laughs) 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 That's wonderful. It is. Right, let's see. Okay, so, are you hanging up your stocking in the wall? Are you hoping that the snow will start to fall? Do you ride on down the hillside in a buggy you have made? When you land upon your head, then you've been slayed. Uh, right. <laughs> what I like about it is they're called slayed. Yeah. You're on a sleigh. Yeah. And if you get wiped out, you get slayed. <laughs> I've never known a lyric where the word three. at the end has three different meanings. Okay. That's, I mean, that's not All that. right. Okay. I'll give them that. Um, there's always that argument this time of year as well. That's Christmas specials. First Christmas special, by the way. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's wearing it. He's wearing it. I didn't get the. I, I should have realized there was a Christmas jump remember. I was looking at ones too. I'll get shitloads of them if you want any. They will this, fit this you. Looks like, <laughs> this kind of looks like one, but it's just my regular attire. <laughs> if I give you one of my Christmas jumpers, it'll look like you're in a papoose. <laughs> <laughs> M- Moomin <laughs> uh, We had a uh, Before we get back onto the Christmas stuff um, My sister-in-law Katie Texted me out of the blue Asking if I could let her know Where <laughs> you I... got Your jumper from from last week <laughs> I don't promise Which isn't I... even one of your Like <laughs> <laughs> Premier jumpers. Yeah, it's not one of your your your, your feature jumpers. It's that <laughs> bizarre tartan looking fucking thing. Hey, what is wrong with it? It's not. It's not one of the bit. Be- like this is nice. <laughs> nice. But the other one. Uh, but <laughs> that one is a horror show. It's a bad one. Did, I, I don't even know where I got it. I will find it. Do you know what it reminds me of? Do you know the? <laughs> do you know the sack that? Killian Murphy makes as the scarecrow to put over his head (laughs) in Batman Begins. That's what that jumper reminds me of. It's just woven from different bits of fabric. (laughs) It's fucking... It looks scratchy. It looks so uncomfortable to wear. It's not uncomfortable (laughs) to wear. It does look scratchy, man. Yeah. You said that in fairness. Uh, (laughs) Jesus, I actually don't know. I I, I would just be like, I met it. It would make sense. Yeah, it would. It It would would, make more sense. I'm pretty sure I got that on one of the apps. You know, like a clothes app. <laughs> what, Vinted or something like Not that? Not Vinted. Or? It, was a, it was a new one. I've used Vinted. Uh-huh. i got these jeans and Vinted. Right. <laughs> oh, Vinted's fine. Vinted's yeah, like... I got, it, it was like ASOS or something All like right, that. All right, yeah. That's and not me, bad. me and Daniel, last year, bought fucking like an app on ASOS and we just went mad on it. But the problem is he bought everything on it mm. and then just came back and he just looked like every single outfit he had was just like, oh, yeah pure ASOS model yeah which it starts showing oh yeah but I'm pretty sure I went for something wacky I don't think it was expensive that jumper I think that jumper was a fiver aye if, if I know me yeah <laughs> even at a fiver I'm going <laughs> Jesus fucking money bags here yeah, the money bags color. Uh, no Daniel Daniel Sloss actually bought me this jumper did he he brought oh, me this back oh. from LA ah, we saw it in um, Christmas uh, shark yeah in their version of uh, TK Maxx what's that Target? No, I think he, he, he said it's, some, it's, it's just called some like TJ Max. <laughs> They've not changed fuck all. <laughs> That's like fucking 
uh, Eddie Rockets. Do you know Eddie Rockets? Oh, had one in, in Dublin. Dublin, yeah. Yeah, there's one in Galway called is it Jimmy Rockets. Right. <laughs> The whole family. It's the exact same. It's just, like, it's just like <laughs> Jimmy and Eddie Rockets. <laughs> Rocket Brothers. We had, a, we had a twins in our town called Ronnie and Rage. No. Uh, really? Yeah. Ronnie and Rage? Yeah. Wow. There's nothing else to this. Like, no. They're, they're related. They weren't gangsters or criminals? Nah, or? Well, yeah. They yeah. definitely broke the law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think you're always going to do that if your name's Ronnie and the other's known as Rage. Aye, aye. That's true. That's true. Um, no, what I was going to ask was, um, there's that debate at this time of year at Christmas, how much Noddy Holder actually makes from that song. Oh, okay. Because there's all wild speculation that it's something like 300 grand. He just basically gets a check that lands at his door yeah, yeah. on the 1st of December for 300 grand every year. But okay. I reckon it's more. You think it's more? Well, so this would be in a day when royalties... Because now I don't think you would be able to do it. Because I know, I know people, comics, that have been in adverts that have been like... Played out again. Aye, and they, but they've also been given over and dubbed <laughs> into other countries' languages. Yes, yes. So they yeah, get yeah. residuals from that, and they earn a fucking fortune off that. And yeah, then you yeah. know people that were in sitcoms and stuff, even a, even a small part in a sitcom years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the BBC don't do repeat fees anymore. Whereas... If you were in, if, I mean, if you were in Only Fools and Horses, or you were in the Royal Family, yeah, yeah. Considering that's pretty much on non-stop on UK Gold and shit like that, yeah, you're getting yeah. a fair whack of repeat. Yeah, yeah anything at uh, all money. So, uh, but I reckon I don't know. I reckon I reckon it'll be. I re I'm, I honestly think it might be close to a million that he gets every year. Well, I mean, Sirius X, Sirius, what do you call it? XM or whatever the fuck you call it. Give me a check every Christmas for like twelve pounds. Do you? 12 American dollars or something. What for? <laughs> for the, they, they, they repeat like a, a set of mine's five minutes on like Canadian radio. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> this, this, the thing's called Molly the American. I don't know why. <laughs> it keeps coming by like Molly the American, $8, $12 every Christmas. I'm like, what the fuck? I have to go into, the, have to go into like the, the bank and go, here's my $12. Yeah, of course, because you can't even. No, and then they're like, oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're like, put the they went, wait, like, wait, wait, that, that's it's, literally about 12 quid now. Not even. Is it? No, because no, there'll be a it's, transfer fee. Uh, and everything. So by the time I come in, I'm just like, I, I just. I, like half of it, you may as well just rip it up. Yeah. Just for the actual, <laughs> like I need the tenor. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. saying I don't need the tenor. It's just the whole hassle mm. and embarrassment going in. Like, can you change my eight eight dollar check twelve dollar? <laughs> the first year is like more twenty or something. Like, <laughs> uh, Shane McGowan died this week as well. He did. Yeah. Big, Very sad. Yeah. I, I don't know why I'm, I'm laughing because I'm waiting for you to uh -huh. do something. No, I'm 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 honestly amazed. That he lasted to that. Same in fairness. I mean, there can't be many people that go fucking hell. How the hell did he make it to what sixty five? Do you know? Do you know? Like uh, when Sinead uh, O'Connor died, I was like, he's not going to be long. Mm. They they were two best for me. It's like aye, lived with each other for a good while. But did they? Yeah, last like not 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 last not the last five years. I'm pretty sure like. But for about 10, 15 years, they lived together. Imagine that flat. Oh, Jesus wild, Christ. Wild. I think if I get invited to a, a, back to a flat and walked out in Sinead O'Connor and yeah, she yeah, might just yeah. bought, that's going to leave us, lads, if it's all the same with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We used to do, when I did that fucking reggae night when I was like 18, Catch Reardon used to come in and do the, or Northern Soul and Punk. All uh right. -huh. Sometimes she'd drop in oh, from the nice. Pogues. From the Pogues. My, uh... <laughs> My wife Amy was in a night out with Shane McGowan once. Jesus, everybody. Um, regard, like, r r bizarrely, like, it, it, she wasn't, like, it, it was part of a bigger, I was going to say a bigger crew. I was <laughs> making my wife out to be like she's in the fucking Wu Tang clan. <laughs> I think, I, I can't remember if they'd been to see the Pogues. I yeah. think they'd been to see the Pogues. And then someone knew someone that worked, like, a, in the merchandise bit or backstage or something like that. And then a whole group of people went to, a restaurant in Glasgow called Regano, and she said he is he was the drunkest person she has ever seen in her life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was... She's married to me. <laughs> so that's like, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, but yeah, she said it was. I mean, it was incredible. Like it was literally. You don't even know whether he was 
He knew he was on a night out. Yeah, all. yeah, no, no, there's been none but stories. Every time yeah. I see him, as one's in Manchester, he's always in Manchester causing a right scene. Yeah. He's banned from like loads of pubs in Dublin. Oh, uh, really? Just too hammered. It's like, we can't have you in here, man. Ah, exactly. Aye, aye, <laughs> look aye, at, aye. You look at his face and it's purely done by alcohol and you're like, holy shit. Yeah, uh, yeah. Did well, did well. Oh, fuck, I. Mm, absolutely, yeah. Oh, Christ, I love that song. Aye. Uh, uh, so he, he's done, uh, yeah, that's Dolores. O'Riordan, mm-hmm. Sinead, and and the only ones left now is like Bono and Conor McGregor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Took the good ones. That they must, left I know. I was going to say, that must really royal Irish people. I'm like, the, the fact that the, <laughs> Dolores, Shane McGowan, and Sinead O'Connor have gone, yet yeah, Bono walks, walks the land, <laughs> healthy <scale>. as. <laughs> Doing a fucking residency in Vegas in a globe. <laughs> Doing a residency in a marble. <laughs> I fucking why? Do you know, I can't believe it. I know so many people that, that still love you too sometimes. And it's I really like great. you too. But like you would never I like one or two songs. No doubt. Right? I, but but you know, go into the Vegas sphere to make sure you see yeah. them. Like Dwayne that did our artwork. He big went. U2 fan. He's, I'm pretty sure he went to the sphere. I mean, I'd like to see it. It looks like a cool fucking thing. And I'm not, yeah, I'm not I'm not ragging on it, but I just can't believe No. Irish people still like you too. I or go. I think if you're if you're in a band, so if you're Adam Clayton or Larry Mullen, yeah, there yeah. are two members. When you a U2 form. Yeah. If you if they if the lead singer and the lead guitarist then turn around and go, I'm gonna be called Bono. You go, fuck off! No, you're not. Your name's Paul. Yeah, you're going to be called Paul. If the guitarist then went, I'm going to go and say, I'm going to call myself the Edge. <laughs> fuck off! Like yeah, genuinely, yeah, yeah, yeah. just fuck off out the band. You tit. <laughs> Take your fucking effects board. Go and learn to actually play the guitar rather than putting everything on a fucking delay and get a the Edge. Fuck off! What are you a fucking cabinet from IKEA? <laughs> fuck off! <laughs> I reckon I'd be. Um, I always think. I always asked, used to ask people who they thought the real age was, like if it's, as if he was the Sting, and they'd be like, <laughs> the, what, sting? "The Sting, the Sting, the Sting, <laughs> the Sting." I put an N in there. <laughs> I, put, I put an N. There. <laughs> that is even funnier. There's two layers said, but we know who the Sting is yeah, too. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, the other one, Sting. Uh, they fuck with you, you fucking jaw. They called Sting. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> what about who else? Do you have a, a Seal, Seal. I don't even know what his Neil Hewitt's real name is. Uh, I think so. <laughs> That'd be great if it was like... It doesn't bother me with other... It doesn't bother me with female artists, so bizarrely. Beyonce, quite happy, because that is her name. <laughs> Madonna, doesn't bother me. What's Madonna's real name? Oh, it's like... Is it something real shit? It, it's something really... It's like really Latin American, Kim, like Italian. Kim, oh, is like it? Uh, I thought it was going to be like Kimberly McGee. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, Madonna. <laughs> Kimbo, uh, Kimbo McGee, Cher. I don't. That actually can't be a real name. Sure, it's probably just Cheryl. Cheryl, <laughs> Cheryl McGee, Cheryl McGee. <laughs> They're all McGees. <laughs> you had Nelly Furtado, <laughs> Deirdre McGee. <laughs> oh, uh, Seal, yeah. I uh, I don't know what Seal. Lot, there's a lot of littles now. That's well, that I'm becoming like. That's like a real old man. <laughs> uh, real old. I know. Man. Lil, Became a granddad there just to jump her got into me, and I was sitting there going like, "Well, there's a lot of little Yari and little I know Uzi, Lil, little Uzi Vert, Lil Wayne. That's all I want to know. Lil Wayne, Lil He's... Wayne, and Lil Lee Allen. <laughs> <laughs> that, it's fucking so, <laughs> top tier. <laughs> top tier. Oh. Do you know I got played off last night? I I read this. Yeah, and it was in the stand. No, is it Red Raw though? No. Free for all in Monkey Barrel. Jesus, you got played off in Monkey Barrel <laughs> at the free for all. What? Where it's just essentially uh, people with learning difficulties waking to go on stage, and they went, "No, we've had enough of this." Oh man, I I was sitting there going like, "I says I'll be good. I have nothing today. I'll write five minutes of jokes that I would never think, and I'll go out and just do it." Because mm-hmm. it's been a while since I did that. Things feel stale, you know. Keep the joke thing going up. So when I read this stuff, came on stage. Doing, I, I, I email ahead going like, I don't want to do the hat thing. Can you put me on first? Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So I got it in me. Uh, Jay, Jay Lafferty's hosting and she's setting it all up and all that too. Right? I go out and I'm doing like five, six out of ten. Like one or two did uh-huh. well, the rest of them were like, nah. I was like, well, I'm not using that again. Right. But I was all building up towards like doing this bit about, 
about my first jobs. Mm. I don't know if I told you about the uh, right. But anyway, it's like my first job because my first job. I'll bring it up actually in mm. a second. But uh, just when I just started out, I was like, all right, uh, and I was like, oh, you know, my first job was next thing. There's the the lights went slightly up in the music. Not the the, and I was like, Marilyn played me off. You know, Marilyn. Yeah, Marilyn just went. Yeah, you've done your five. <laughs> and wow. I was sitting there and I, I went, well, he wants me to finish. And then I walked off uh, and Jay's dying laughing. And uh, I, he goes up and uh, and Jay was like, well, no, my, uh, our tech there didn't really want to give the, the professional an extra minute or two. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> that, that is one of the only times where I think you'd have been justified by saying, do you know who I am? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, yeah. Well, yeah, the free for all. What uh, a... What a what music do they play off? Because in the stand, it's obviously Reet Petit, but what do they play off with? I don't know. I don't know. Do, goodbye. <laughs> don't cry for me, Argentina. I don't know what it was. <laughs> God almighty. And is it loud? Like, do they do it as they like the Oscars, oh, like you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow just, and then just... Just went... Jesus. Dead, dead, mic cut. And yeah. I was Jesus. like, all right, thank you. Man. It was very funny, though. I don't I know. I think Marilyn was just literally... Uh, take into his like actual notes in fairness to him he was just like if you don't you don't do five you play them off Aye. So, but he didn't give any leeway to him last night in fairness when I walked out he was like and I, don't, I, don't. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I like Merlin anymore it's a good name I did like Merlin for a spell <laughs> <laughs> oh no you're oh, oh no yes Oh, That's, honest to God. Well, oh, like it's actually great now. I Ten just, minutes in, and you know, you've already cool. had more comedy. No, this is like because it's it started a couple of fucking like I don't know about. 10 episodes ago mm. and fucking sticking a horrible joke just to upset the other so funny it is funny yeah <laughs> you've gotten two in two aye Lil Lay Allen Lil Lay Allen oh god right um, Christmas films mm. is what we're doing for the next four weeks because uh, there's tons of them and they're all excellent um, so I've picked Home Alone mm. for the first week now do you first of all do you like Christmas uh, I didn't. Right. And now I do. Okay. Karen and Daniel here over the last four years did a yeah. real number. They are very big fans. And of they, they pushed me into it. And yeah. then I just sold myself to it. Now I'm all for it. Do you reckon? Pretty much all for it now. Do you reckon you've enjoyed Christmas more since you've reintegrated yourself with the people of Whoville? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you? You're on one today, aren't you? <laughs> You're on one fucker today. Do you yeah, know why yeah. I might not have liked Christmas? And this was a part of that last bit. My first job. Oh, yeah, shit. Sorry, yeah. I tell you what my first job was. When my when I was 15, my first ever job was to... My mum worked in the post office. Uh, would bring me in and I'd shred everyone's Christmas letters. Oh, my God. <laughs> so my very first job was... I'd go into the post office, just take all the kids' letters and just go... Shred Jesus. them all. Jesus. Didn't even open half. You know, Is this... This is pre-Christmas. This is from like uh, yeah. December first onwards. Yeah, yeah. They arrive at the post office. And yeah, yeah. They're not even open. You just right through. The my shredder. God. Make sure they're Christmas letters. Sometimes I was going to say so. There must have been you some mistakes. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the last money I have <laughs> to help your dying. <laughs> <laughs> Someone didn't get their cancer diagnosis <laughs> over Christmas because you were on a shredding spree that day. I, I was sitting there every time looking and go thank from. Chris and I'd be like, I wonder if that's my friend Chris. I'd be sitting there like looking and going, Oh, posh family wants two Xboxes. I was say, cause <laughs> did you get a chance to read them? Oh, I read loads of them. Were there any proper heartbreaking ones where it was like, I just want my mum and dad to get back together? I don't, I don't again, remember. Right? That would be great. Shit. I, I think oh. I was, why, I, I would have probably looked out for that now. But yeah. I didn't have the awareness to do that when I was 14. If that's I saw Neil writing, I probably would have been like, ugh. Oh, that's what a horrible. Just one. bring Papa back. What You're a, not going to see it. The, honest to God, it's no wonder you're the piece of shit that you are. Because if that's your first foray into the employment world, <laughs> hey, you know what? My mum put me through it. It was my mum that was like, Ryan, I got a job for you. Wow. Yeah. But it, my mum, I remember Christmas. Uh, what's the worst ever Christmas present you got? Do you remember last year what I got? Or was it the year before? Uh, was it. Did you not. Someone not buy. Uh, was it something to do with the British military? No. Was that Tom not buy you one of them? Yeah, I think yeah. he did that in the Secret Santa. Now, my mum last Christmas bought me uh, men's health tablets. What? 
Like vitamin tablets? Or just vitamins. Just, uh, just called men's health. <laughs> That's the kind of shit you get in Primark. Yeah, yeah. It's like just, 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 just said, generic things. Just said men's health, and I go, all right, cheers. I, would, I, they were probably like Viagra things. <laughs> Did I, you take any of them? No. No. They, I bet that's what they were. I bet they were. It had like, a full body, a grey man, looked like the Silver Surfer, right. like standing like this. And a massive heart on. <laughs> With a big bunker. <laughs> bunker. <laughs> you got a right oil bunker on him, the Silver Silver. Uh, I didn't know your mum worked in the post office. Yeah, it was my dad. Oh, did you? you my, my dad got sacked for throwing a dart. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. Right, so what happened was my dad worked in a car factory, right? Uh -huh. And I, I heard that, like, oh, God, the factory, this factory called Seagrow, they made car doors mm -hmm. and stuff, right? And I remember he came back and he was like, job's gone. And we were, and he was like, fucking factory closed down, you know? And I was like, mm -hmm. all right, cool. My mum got him a job as a postman in the post office. My right. mum's like an area manager, right? So, uh, so he gets a job as a postman, right? But I don't know, about seven, eight years, we're driving towards my cousin's house, which is where the factory was and mm -hmm. i drive past and the factory's blossoming it's open i was like i looked at her, i was like the fucking seagrow reopened and she just kind of looked at me he's like well you're probably old enough to know now <laughs> oh god and i was like what's happened oh, here no. he got hammered i got a wedding apparently and he <laughs> and he came into the work the next day hammered can't really do it in a car factory with all the heavy machinery and the, the manager was like you need to go home and eugene had a dart in his back pocket from the night what? before <laughs> in the pub and just try to went he tried to chuck it and apparently i think it's, it's all like he missed him and, but he still went bullseye he's like, get out so yeah. oh god oh so my. yeah so my dad's now a postman wow he I often gets into trouble for kicking like dogs yeah i was gonna say i should have known your mum was a worked at the post office actually why is that now? i'm forever slipping things in our box <laughs> Fuck it, the, the, the <laughs> devilment. <laughs> I could see your eyes glazing over like the fucking... Oh, God. <sighs> like this. Um, fucking shark. So, yeah, uh, so you've been you've been tuned into Christmas. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I've been getting into it now. I've Good. already watched The Night Before. Oh. Which we'll do uh, probably we'll next do, Christmas. Uh, yeah, we will, we will. It, 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 yeah, spoiler, it's not going to be one of the four, but it's definitely up there. Yeah, it's yeah, up. it's so much fun. So Home Alone, <laughs> um, yeah. which I'm assuming everybody must have seen. Like, I, I, I've, I honestly think I've... Because this came out when I was nine. Uh, I was just born. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 1990, yeah. I reckon I've seen this every single year since 1990. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> middle middle summer. I didn't realise this until I was looking at the dates. Pesci had this and good in goodfellas i did check that months was, apart yeah yeah what a what a year for the man <laughs> yeah, good yeah. god what a, what a, like two home runs the biggest I, one of the biggest films of all time one of the biggest kids films of all time i mean like probably what, the biggest what a difference in acting in terms of yeah 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 even what they look like oh god what a, like and i've got i've got tons of, i've got some of my own series about home alone because I think Home Alone is one of the darkest films ever made. <laughs> right. There's a couple of parts of it, yeah. yeah. Do you know, like, uh, well, 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 I told you this at the end of the last episode when you said Home Alone about how much I, when I kid, I hated this film. Mm. I hated Macaulay Culkin's. It was just yeah. Macaulay Culkin. I hated Richie Rich especially. Oh, yeah. Uh, di uh, you're delighted when he died in My Girl. I liked My Girl. Yeah. <laughs> the I was bees. Like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like the wicker man. He's like, yeah. the bees. And I'm like, get yeah. them. <laughs> Stab the little cunt. <laughs> I'm fine now with it. Give him his glasses. He so, can't uh, see anything without <laughs> his glasses. He's not going to need to see anything. He's dead hen. <laughs> Open casket. <laughs> Guy's all fucking swollen up. <laughs> Ballooned up. Uh, um, I, I've seen this film every single year, pretty much since then. And um, I love it. I absolutely, That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, think know, it's, I, I, I still laughed a lot. I watched it with Amy and the kids last night. And there's wee moments that I, I howled laughing at a bit I've not ha laughed at before, which is when the, when all the mayhem's going on in the house and uh, Kevin's been told he needs to sleep with Fuller and he's raging because Fuller always pisses the bed. Yeah, yeah. And he comes in and asks Buzz and he goes, uh, <laughs> can, I, can I stay in your room? And he goes, I wouldn't let you stay in my room if you were growing on my ass. <laughs> 
fucking hell I'm laughing. I didn't notice Fuller, who Fuller was until this time. Yeah, I had Kieran. Ah, I, had yeah. no, I had no fucking idea. Yeah. Uh, I just thought, like, yeah, I just didn't know. I don't know who that dad is. I know he's in everything. John Heard. I know, I know, I know he's yeah. in all that shit, but I he never was in, knew. He was in Sopranos. Was he? Yeah, oh, he was in he's a, he's in a, he's, oh, a, he's in a lot of fuck. in a lot of early nineties films. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. And um, then Catherine Harris, great, obviously. Oh, Catherine, Catherine Harris, thirty six in that. Is she thirty six years? I had fucking depressing. <laughs> like thirty six years old in that film. Yeah, yeah. Jesus I can, Christ! I, proper nineties as yeah. the mother of all these children. Oh God! Um, so if you've not seen it, then. It, I don't know what to tell you. Kid gets left home. Fabla go to holiday Paris. Home alone. Mayhem ensures that he gets left at home. Uh, he thinks he's made his family disappear. He has to look after his home. Two burglars try to burgle his home. He protects it. it like at the start, he, he, the policeman comes in, mm. right? And it's Joe Pesci, obviously, mm. pretending to be a policeman just to make sure that everyone's out and all mm. that type of shit. Uh, the, the one thing is he's so bad at hiding who he is. Yeah. Because he, at one stage he goes, and... Somebody's coming in, like he'd be like, "And don't worry about your house when you're away." Yeah, you know, it'll be just fine. Yeah, yeah, he does uh, say you that. Just, yeah. You just turn around when you walk up the yeah. steps, going, "Are you going to try and rob my house?" Yeah. <laughs> I also reckon if I was pretending a policeman, I might have taken my gold tooth out. <laughs> like I reckon, I reckon uh, nobody's going to go. Oh well, I feel secure now because fucking Flavor Flav's <laughs> looking after the house. You know what I mean? It's like I think that would be the one thing I'd take out to pretend I was a cop. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, do you know? Um, it, 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 there's there's a lot about it. When he comes in there, he's trying he's trying to do that. The kids are all fucking running around like mayhem. Uh, nobody's answering. Uh, and then the pizza. It's the first time you see the pizza delivery guy. Mm. that gets absolutely fucked in many ways all yeah. over the place. Um, I, uh, the, they were getting ready basically to go on holidays to France. And uh, the part where I was just mesmerized at the start was when the dad goes. Um, how the f- what's the plugs? How am I going to shave in France? Yeah, I know. Well, like, just a non-electric razor. I know, I know, but I, like, know I know. How I know, the fuck I know. are they? Like, how, I know. It's never good when this guy's going to be when the parents are retarded. The parents are <laughs> like. I should use that word, but do you think it's because there's a lot of there's a lot of things that, about this film. First of all, the, like the storm. The reason they're late for the airport is the, a, there's a storm that takes out the electrical wires. Takes out the electricity yeah, and yeah. their alarms go off. There is not a chance in fucking hell that a family household <laughs> 15, with wasn't it? 15 children running about is sleeping in past eight o'clock. Yeah, not yeah. a chance in all the adults. Not a chance in shit. You've got a kid that can barely sleep without pissing himself. Yeah, you yeah. tell me he's not up at five in the morning because he shit the bed. Like, of yeah. course, someone's up. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, not yeah, a chance. Yeah. Also, there's all no, the adults. Even in a pre 9 11 world, <laughs> right? You're leaving the house at eight with all those kids. The, the fucking Uncle Frank says that the plane, the plane leaves in forty-five minutes. So you're fifteen minutes until the gate closes, probably. Yeah, but like they're half an hour away already in the car. How, Jane? Well, like unless they get taken right to the plane. Yeah, and yeah. driven on in one of those back <laughs> ramp things. There is not a chance they're getting on that flight. Grand Theft Auto, wrapped no over chance. the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was ridiculous. I did laugh at how the the pre nine eleven. You could see it because you know they're running through the the like they'd be lit up if they did that. The yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 Ran yeah, in through yeah. security. Yeah. They'd just be opening fire yeah. on the kids. Yeah, I love the way as well in that kind of era. You could just buy a plane ticket off someone else. Uh, yeah, she yeah. tries to buy plane tickets off people. Uh, ah, yeah. Like, just with their name on it. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're not even in first class. Here, have my first class ticket. It's not how it works at all. <laughs> oh, I feel so the old couple that try to help, right? Yeah. Oh, I can't remember his name. Oh, Patty, I feel so bad. Give her your ticket. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? Um, Right. So, I've, I've, I've got to, I've got to sh- give you some of the theories to this film. Okay. Right. Okay. There is a I right the main one is as I've discussed in this podcast before what the dad does for a living. Okay, Peter McAllister, right? Right. Now he's got a massive house. It is by far the biggest house on that whole street. Yeah, it's the nicest house in the street because the wet bandits target it as being that that's like the whale. That's yeah, yeah, the yeah. One that's he's going. There'll be some nice jewelry. There'll be a, probably a cash hoard. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. He is also paying for. So what is it? 15 people. 11 kids, 
four adults, mm. all to fly to France. He's picking up the pizzas as well, which are no fucking mean you know, 122 200, quid. Was 122, yeah. Uh, he's got the transfer to the airport as well. Four of them are in first class. Yeah. All the kids are in uh, regular. So what he does for a living, right? Because it's never, ever mentioned, right? Now, the populace, my theory is people trafficking. <laughs> No, why would you? That's my thing. No, why would you have uh, have Peter McAllister as a, a, a sex trafficker? Because that's why I or people. Tra- that's why I think there's so many people in the house all the time, because you can have other people. Because if they're so, if they, if the if the if the, if the, uh, the neighbors are so used to having that many people in the house all the time, you can easily add another couple that you haven't been able to ship yet, hanging about the place. And no one's going to raise an eyebrow. So you think there's going to they be a just go, They've always got 15 people around there. And they're like, oh, yeah, there's Sergio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why Why does some of them look a lot weaker than the <laughs> others? I don't know. But there's always 15 people around there. Just got to go down to the docks, honey. <laughs> so that would make sense because he'd earn, he'd earn a lot of money. That's why he has to go to Paris. Okay, right. Right? Because we know from Taken. Yeah, it happens. One of the, okay, it's one of the, prime, of sense. the prime people trafficking areas. So he's over there on a scouting. I don't think he's just in, I think Frank's involved as well. <laughs> I think the brother who now lives in Paris, the brother lives in Paris now. The brother's been given an opportunity in Paris. So the, the, the brother, whoever has, Rob, okay. I think his name is, he's running the operations okay. in Paris, the trafficking. But he's Peter's, the big dog. He's the dig dog. The and dig Frank, dog. <laughs> Frank, I'll, I'll get to him in a minute, right? <laughs> so I reckon it's that. I reckon that's why they have to go over there. That's why... There's a weird bit at the start when he meets Pesci, because at this point he still thinks Pesci's a police officer. The first thing he says to him is, I'm under arrest. <laughs> okay. Is that is that a normal... When you first met a police officer... Like, if you met a fireman randomly, would you go, uh, is, my, is my house on fire? Like, you wouldn't do that, right? <laughs> that, would be, no, that would be more on, plausible. I, I, say, I, yeah. would, I would say it if the fireman was in my house. Yeah, well, that's true. That, that is more plausible, but... <laughs> but you don't say that to policemen. No, no, The no. first thing you say to a policeman is, oh, oh my God, am I under arrest for something? <laughs> right? So he's, he fucking knows there's shit going on, right? Right. Um, okay. That is why I have a theory as well that Kevin is so hung up on getting the new toothbrush that has to be approved because teeth brush, toothbrushes are one of the biggest things that will contain DNA. So the dad has drummed it into the whole household that we buy a new toothbrush on the regular because we can't have this shit. That's why. So you think they're all fine with it? It's all Catherine right? Harlan knows. She knows. She fucking knows, <laughs> right? And she's quite happy to live the good life. Okay. She turned a blind eye to it. Yeah. That's why she's such a terrible mother. Okay. Okay. Right. right. That's why they have the massive furnace. Oh God, in the basement, right? <laughs> right? Not not to burn people. What I'm saying is to burn evidence, right? There's a lot okay. of evidence that they need to burn toothbrushes constantly uh, out the wazoo. in there, yeah, yeah. right? That's why Kevin is so terrified to go up to the attic because any of the spare people, they keep up there. Spare people. Spare people. Okay. Right? Look, look. Now, the popular theory <laughs> is that he's a mob boss. <laughs> and why is... That's just he doesn't what, have the, the he doesn't carry himself like a mob boss. But maybe he does. But like, no, you wouldn't. But if you were trying to keep an incognito suburban lifestyle, what, like, like he's not he's not Tony well, Soprano, well, but he's yeah, not. Yeah, okay. But you know, he dresses like a mob boss. Does he? He's fuck? got a big overcoat on quite a lot of the time. Okay, well, Jesus right? Christ! All right, American wears overcoat in Christmas. But I am still I'm still going with people trafficker. You think it's a people trafficker? And I think they keep Uncle Frank around. They quite they'd love to get rid of him. But, but he knows. He knows a lot of shit. I also think He knows where the bodies are. He knows where the bodies are, but also Uncle Frank has molested the children. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Fuller wets the bed. It's got nothing to do with the Pepsi. He wets the bed because Uncle Frank's in the house again. Do you think and that's right? why anyway, that another to get away reason and he why they crush the chair against them? Right? Yes. Yeah, that's not the first time he's pinned them up against a wall. <laughs> right? Oh, God. That's why Kevin's terrified. That's why Kevin's terrified of the basement as well. Because okay. a lot of the pumping 
yeah. happened down in that, <laughs> the way, in that sorry, basement. Sorry, it was only being pumped in now. So I thought so Frank, people Frank tr- would molest Frank, people. Frank would be, you know, dipping in, dipping into the stash. Yes. That's why they've tried to pin the blame on the old man Marley. They try to get <laughs> okay. a rumor going on about him where people have disappeared. Fuck all of the old man Marley. It's Uncle okay. Frank has been a diddling. He took un- he took old man Marley's kids. Okay, right. Well, no, the, the kid came back. Old man Marley's kid comes back at the end. Oh, I see he does. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's the story about that he killed the his story, kids then? The story is he killed his, his story is he killed his family and other people in the neighborhood. And then he said that the police had not enough evidence to convict the shovel murderer. And in my head, oh, I was yeah, like, yeah. if there was a shovel murderer, it would have been humble evidence. If yeah, you're, yeah. You're wiping people's heads off with a shovel. Also, okay. does. I mean, they say salt. He's, he very talks them into mummies, but does salt, does salt dissolve human bodies? No, it doesn't salt not. Like, I thought it preserve them. Preserve it, yeah. It would take the moisture out, in fairness. But I don't know what, what what's lye. Lye. Is there any? Oh yeah, that's that shit that they use in Fight Club to make the soap. Oh shit! No, I wasn't thinking about that. But is it not? Yeah, it is. It is. I was thinking about lye in uh, the wire. When they, they bury, when oh, they yeah. close them up on the thing, you cover them in lye, put plastic over them. It must be just to burn it quicker, get rid yeah. of the body quicker. Okay, right, okay. So that, that wouldn't work. That would actually make you a mummy. Yeah. That's it, because my friend James, who I, I wanted to make sure I gave a shout out on this, because he was te- cause he knew we were doing this. He was texting me various... Was he, has he put this pedo thing in? No, no, I've had this for years. Yeah, okay, right. I've always believed this for a long, long I, time. I have my theory now. My theory is he's a stand-up comic. <laughs> he's what he's the new Matt Rife. <laughs> <laughs> His crowd works off the fucking chain. At the start, okay. Kevin comes up and goes, "Uncle Frank's showing the kids a film, but he won't let me watch it." <laughs> Catherine O'Hara says, "Well, if your Uncle Frank won't let you watch it, it must be really bad. How bad is it? she knows?" She knows that he's shown him some kind of fucking child pornography. <laughs> For fuck's sake. And it's such this... it's such brutal, horrible child pornography that even Uncle the Beast. F- even the be- <laughs> even, <laughs> even the... Franco the Beast is, <laughs> is, is, is just... going, Christ, that's a bit bad. <laughs> is... There's too much in it. Right? Okay. So there you go. I want it right, right. Right, this is, this is your Alex Jones. Another, crim- another criminal, right? Okay. That's why they get in the plane. Because it's big, the big boss man, Peter. Who else gets Who else gets taken directly to? Who else gets... He's he's made some calls. That plane's been delayed. <laughs> There's not a chance that plane took off in the time it was allocated to. I feel like a fucking sex trafficker. Like, and as a man that has tra- been would, questioned... Wouldn't fly commercially. <laughs> I, I, or would it be like sex traffickers? The one thing they're really looking out for in airports, right? Like I got sex, I got sexed up. I got, I got, like I got questioned for it. Remember I told you about this today? The sex trafficking? Yeah. No. <laughs> have I not told you? I have told you this. I'm fairly certain I'd remember this story. I got, I got questioned for sex trafficking in right. um, Sydney Airport, mm-hmm. and I, and I was on holidays, and I was with uh, three friends who were all women, right, and. They qu- they brought me in. I thought it, this was like I thought it was like I was going to be a part of like a joke, like mm. a, it was a prank show. So like I, I got they all got taken away into separate rooms, and I did too. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, um, they they basically asking these weird questions for a good while. And then I was like, what the fuck is this? And then I was like, kind of half laughing because I thought I was being set up. <laughs> I wasn't, <laughs> right? So they were all like, have you anything to say about all this thing? And I was like, have you seen them? I wouldn't be stand to make much money. <laughs> Whole place just like. Dead faces. Jesus. Nobody said anything. And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so sad. Oh, that's and bad. And then they came, I must have just re- like lit up on some sort of profile. <laughs> and then apparently I got away because it goes, yeah. And I was like devastated then because when they came out, they were just like, you're all right, the other three have cleared you. I mean, they laughed at the whole thing. And I was like, <laughs> and then I came out to them free and I was like, you laughed? Do you think I couldn't be a sex trafficker? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I've got the head now. I've got the look. I was ginger, but now I'm cured. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, the last, the last bits I'm going to have about Uncle Frank and uh, okay, right. the trafficking. 
right? It, it's there uh, is a lot. You've got you've you've made your points. I'm not trying. I'm, I'm generally not trying to make a very wholesome because it is a very wholesome, lovely film. The whole Marley uh, storyline is very, very nice and very, very nice. I'm just saying that there's dark undertones to this film. Is Matt the old shovel man? I thought that yeah. was fucking shit. But I'll get oh, to no, that. Oh uh, no, I, I mean, people. Tra- I, I might be taking it too far with people trafficking, him, but I definitely think he's in the dad's or, he's in into, or, he's organized, into organized crime. He's right. in the organized oh, okay. crime. Um, what what was the last things I was going to say about it? Uh, Die. Do you think it, if he was in the organized too. crime, though? Mm. Here's my one. If he's in the organized crime, the two robbers would know who he is because they keep telling him it's McAllister's house. No, because I don't think he goes by McAllister. <laughs> okay. Um, oh my God, is this PD Max house? <laughs> but I think I think that the fact that uh, when they they plays the the tape. Angels with filthy souls. Yeah, I thought that was going to uh, be a porno. When I, said that. <laughs> I was like, what? oh no. Because it was just um, after he saw the Playboy. And he's like, uh, I sort of recognize snakes. Like, snakes, snakes. That's, they, they've used, they've, they, they've specifically used this film because that's part of their code names as well. Okay, right. Okay. And though no, that was the last thing. This goes on to Home Alone 2. Uncle Frank panics like fuck when a. Uh, Kevin, because Kevin's got like that dictaphone recorder thing yeah. that he uses in the hotel. He records him in the shower. <laughs> and that's that's like the biggest panic that Uncle Frank has because now he's now he's got his, his voice on tape. Okay, right. So that right, I mean, now right. he's got admissible evidence. <laughs> you that they, you're they taking leaps now. They literally do not want a single bit of you, you evidence around about this house. Leaps. You don't well explain that like no when they go through the, the Murphy houses yeah. basement, they don't have a massive why have they got such a big furnace? Like that's like no boiler I've ever seen in my life in any house. It's a big house. Why does it come up like that? It's a big house. They got a What are they but like why what are you burning in there? I'd burn everything in a furnace if I had one. Exactly. Of course you would. <laughs> if you've got the furnace, suddenly when you when you have the opportunity to burn, you end up finding things to burn. Right. Okay. I do. I do agree with that because like there is a barrel out there that used to burn shit in for the exactly. Life. I was like, all right. And how far does it go? You start burning. Uh, I, oh yeah. What you you the think odds, because I started oh, the odd newspaper. <laughs> yeah. Then you move on to clothes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then it's a pet. <laughs> like. <laughs> so it's. <laughs> Newspaper, clothes, a beloved pet. Yeah, that's the... <laughs> one that's that's straight the, onto that's your the escalation land. of it. <laughs> um, In fairness, they do kill animals to start, and then, well, then you're burning humans. Mm. Do you know that, that he's scared of that? You know, like, Kev, or Kevin or whatever, scared of the fucking thing. That's my pampas grass. Mm. Oh, yes, yes. When yes. I was a kid, scared of pampas grass. That was yeah. his. Um, so, yeah, I, m- I might be backing down on the... I might not think that he's actually... I'm I a Lester, get, but I do. I fucking sold me on it. I do now. I'm. I am leaning more towards that they're part of organized crime. Okay. I, I mean, three brothers. One of them's moved to Paris. Shitloads of money. A lot of secrecy. Okay. Yeah. Worried right. about the cops being around. They w- yeah. never find out. Managed to somehow get special treatment in various kind of ways. Would you think his security would be better if he was a mob boss? Because he explains no. the security, he goes, "Ah, you know, we got the." So you, maybe you'd have guys watching the house. Well, they would. Where the fuck were they? Exactly. That's what I mean. I. Oh. Unless. <laughs> unless. There is shit tied up in that house, and this is an insurance job. Okay. So Peter has hired Harry and Marv <laughs> to destroy the house, never thinking that they'd. Oh, that yeah. stupid cow would leave the kid at home. <laughs> She's sitting there going, and now, Kevin, and she sit, he sit there on the plane going, for the law, for the love of fucking yeah. God. Well, so then, right? Kill him. And exactly. <laughs> Initially, Harry and Marv, all they were to do was to quit. That's why they, they flood the place, right? Because if you want to get rid of stuff, right? Flood damage causes far more damage than fire damage. That's a widely accepted fact. Is it? In the damage world. <laughs> That's right. In the insurance world, trust me, it is the water damage that the fire brigade will use to put out the fire that will cause far more damage than the fire itself, right? So initially, that's what they've they, they've been hired 
right? Buy Peter McAllister, Harry and Marv. Okay. They've got to go in there, make it look like a robbery, do a couple of the other houses as well. Okay. Make yeah. it look like it's a spree. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. And be a bit haphazard about it. Make out like you're a couple of morons, right? Don't make this look like a professional job. Okay. Get in there, take what you take. What we need you to get out, which is is that why he evidence, a uh, video, uh, DNA, clothing, probably some laundered cash. Get that out of there. Do your thing with the flood in the place. Destroy it. Fine. We'll come back to France. Oh my God! Some. Hapless burglary has happened, <laughs> but at least we're all okay. They're fucking clean free. Maybe he's trying to make a break. Maybe he's trying to make a break from life like fucking Marty and Ozark. Maybe that's what, right? <laughs> right. Right. So maybe that's what's happening. You, and uh, then, stupidly, they leave the kid behind. Now they're going, well, we've got to clean up this mess, right? So now. Kill the kid as well. <laughs> it's your kid. Doesn't matter. Okay. It's more important that we get away with this scot free. Then, because we don't like Kevin anyway, it's obvious he's the he's the le- he's the least well treated kid in the world. They hate him, yeah. So he's not a huge sacrifice to continue that rich lifestyle. If they were gonna kill one of the kids, Kevin would be the one they'd kill. So that's when it takes on a different turn, and they're like, "We're not just robbing the house anymore. We want you to murder the child." <laughs> Do you sometimes not think you sound like a madman? With this, yes, yes. <laughs> well, I'll say one thing that will back up of one claim about the... Because Marv, when he's, like, robbing the house, mm-hmm. he's, he's not really stealing anything. He's smashing everything. Yeah. And he's putting it in the bag. He's got a crowbar, and he's just, like, scooping it in. And everything's smashing even into the bag exactly. that he's taking. And I'm like, what are you doing? You don't, you're not going to be able to use any of the stuff you're taking here. Uh, he's just an anarchist, is what he is. <laughs> because he's, he's stealing... He's just got a madman. He's stealing, like fucking family portraits and stuff like what fence is gonna take this off you you're not in there just taking jewelry and big screen tvs you're taking plus none of them have got a good tv all the tvs that kevin uh, uses yeah, are, are shite tiny wee <laughs> ones with a video attached to it yeah 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 um the other theory <clears throat> okay this is a wild one that right. i read online <laughs> this, this, this is going to be right. Is that Peter McAllister? <laughs> okay, hit me with it. Runs a government agency that trains Jason Bourne style <laughs> spies, right? And Kevin is his last hope, right? He's tried it with Buzz, right? But Buzz has come out as basically like a mercenary, like an absolute psychopath. Okay, and he doesn't have. He doesn't have the stealth. He doesn't have the the nous to get on. He's too on. crass. Yes, yes. He's far too out in the open. It's, Trump, too, it's Trump's uh, origin story. Exactly, exactly. Kevin is the last hope, which is why he is ostracizing him from the rest of the family so that he can get that almost orphan-like mentality <laughs> where he has no emotion towards anyone because he's never been loved. He has no loved ones. Okay. And this is the test to see if he can defend his house against two. That's why he's he's been training Kevin for... How the fuck does Kevin know how to draw blueprints of a house? Do you know, he did whip them out. Is it, he'd already had them done. What child knows how to hook up a blowtorch with a pulley, right? He's been getting trained for this for years. This is his last test in a Jason Bourne-style thing. Right, right? okay. And I'm more on this one. Right, but also, by the way, what, he had that blowtorch set just for the man's head, and he's, yeah. quite, he's quite lucky, because if it was Marv, he's getting it in the face. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, wandering, exactly, yeah. He'd be wandering around like fucking Simon Weston, yeah. be a whole different horrific, shine bright like a Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God Joe went in that one. Oh, oh, <laughs> Literally horrific. I must funny. say, the funniest thing about the, the thing is getting the, the very first thing he does to them when he shoots uh, Joe Pesci in the testicle. Yeah. He, when he wipes the testicle clean off him. From yeah. Prog- yeah. <laughs> yeah so for, that, for that range. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yeah, that was what very do you, funny. What do you reckon is the, the most painful of the. Right. So the most painful one is that I think this. It's a big blowtorch. You think? The thing was sticking to his head. It's because that it's it's the bit with the, the the fact that there's the fluff of the hat uh, still sticking on the yeah. You, I would I'd go with that. Uh, yeah, I think I can't I, watch the other one. Though. I think the iron. 
I think the iron be... coming down and smack. Because see the way it smacks him. See if that came down point first. That's going through your skull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's done well not to kill them. And the paint, there's no way that paint cans, because they're full. They're heavy, yeah. They would take your head clean off, I reckon. No, you no, no, yeah, you would get knocked easily. out. You would not get, it would not decapitate it would, it would you. smash your face in. It wouldn't just knock you out. It wouldn't knock you out. I reckon it, it would knock you out. Sm- it bloody, would bloody crush nose. your skull. Crush your skull. No chance. No chance in fucking hell. That would, that would kill you. I reckon at very best, s- crush skull. <laughs> No way. Probably head clean off. <laughs> Such a different film if he's standing there and he's just decapitating a robber. <laughs> the nails, defi- that, that, that's a sore one. So That's oh, yeah. the hardest I have to watch when he I steps can. in the nail and it goes into his foot. That's- so I've got a good one about this because uh, I, I know my uncle Scunge, right? <laughs> right. right? Hold on. We, we'll just take a, wee, uh, take a wee pause there. Your uncle what? Scunge. Scunge. <laughs> Cool. We call him Scunge. Absolutely perfectly normal name. <laughs> Let's just move on and not explore that name at all. Right. Scunge. Yeah, we call him Scunge. Right. I don't know. Don't ask What's me. What's his why. real name? Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> so, my uncle Aiden. Sometimes you're so Irish, it's fucking painful. Right. So, Aiden, proper lad. He's uh-huh. got one of those jobs. He's just got a van. Right. Good yeah, man. a van guy. Yeah, a yeah. van guy. He's a van guy, right? So, but he was working on a construction site once, and Aiden. He stepped, he was running around and he, he stepped on a nail straight through his foot, right? So he's like, it's horrific. He takes two steps out and the boys are like, the boys grab him, you know, like, to help him. They're like, well, you're going to have to go to the, get a tetanus shot or whatever. Excuse me. No, right? he's like, you're going to have to get a tetanus shot or whatever. So they put him in the, uh, they put him, the, you know, arms around the, <laughs> the, the the necks or whatever. They try and bring him and they walk him past the same nail and he steps on the same nail through his other foot. Jesus Christ! Scunge put his same, has put his two feet through the exact same nails. He looked in, he came, he drove like he was like, got stigmata. <laughs> stigma, stigma of the. F- <laughs> they thought he was like, <laughs> did they give up halfway through the crucifixion? They got your nail, so he got the same nail through both feet. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, that, that's nice one, Scunge. <laughs> the same nail on the two feet. <laughs> It is proper tit move. Do you know what I was thinking there when you said stigmata? I was like, I I totally forgot that they'd crucified Jesus in the feet as well. Oh, they they went the extra mile with him. Uh, usually well, only. I thought, I was like, oh, that would be, because I was thinking, oh my God, what a funny image that would be if they crucified him by his feet. <laughs> but I had his two feet up like this. <laughs> was he doing that thing? Splayed like a porn star. <laughs> Was he, you know, that that stupid walk? If you're holding your feet and you go, <laughs> just every every crucifixion picture, like Jesus is like that fucking guy in fake taxi when he gets his arse licked. <laughs> oh, <for fuck's> <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! Oh. Yeah, that was sore. That I I, I, I can't do the nails. Do you thing. know it's another weird thing, right? <clears throat> Which I don't. I'm assuming was meant. Um, the proper medieval, like he tars and feathers them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like separately, but yeah, yeah. that must be that must have been in the directors and writers' minds. Going, that can't be a coincidence <laughs> that one of them gets tarred and one of them gets feathered. That's great. No, yeah, that's yeah. that's that's good. That is good. That, um, that must have been. I never even thought of that. Yeah. Uh, Why are you dressed like a chicken? That's very. That's, that's so many funny <laughs> things. The hell you take your shoes off? <laughs> the hell you dress like a chicken? <laughs> Um, they walk into pretty much every it, it was like booby trap 14 when they yeah. went let's not walk into these now yeah hmm. the booby, booby traps are what I call strip clubs <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the Christmas decoration ones that looks very sore as well with the bare feet on the, uh, the Christmas yeah. lights. It's very diehard. Oh, that looks very... Because, and you know, the se- he stands on the second one too. He just goes... Because it, yeah. if you've ever seen a Christmas, one of those Christmas baubles that has smashed, the glass is so thin, but so sharp. It's, it, I mean, it's like razor blade sharp. Yeah. They're good. I mean, they're, they're fucking great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, well, that dude's great. I don't really know him in anything else. Is he? Daniel Stern. No, yeah. He's in uh, he's in City Slickers. Never seen it. That was really good. Okay. Um the tarantula as well. 
because that that's one of the funniest bit when he's the scream he gives oh uh, yeah, yeah yeah film yeah, yeah, yeah. screams of all time yeah but tarantulas aren't they're not poisonous are they no. they're just massive and look scary i yeah i would, I would scream like him oh i oh god like I, oh i'd fuck be that. oh i and but i'd be like I. fuck that I love it. He's like, <laughs> you wouldn't know what's happening. He's like, stand over from my crowbar. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. Don't, don't move. That is very funny. That is oh, very by funny. the way, who the fuck you? I've never even seen a crowbar. Have you seen a crowbar? No, here, I, I've not. Because what would be. The fucking crowbar. They're quite we don't they're kind have, of we, fucking shite. We don't really use them in this country, do we? Crowbars? No, they're shite. Cause my, cause, what the fuck do you need a crowbar? When, we were, watching it, when we were watching it last night, Seamus was asking me, what do you use crowbars for? Pry and I was like, open, but kind literally of... just exactly what they're using them for. Like, like pry and sh- but like, I mean... I can't think of any other use I've ever seen them but other you, than you breaking into so things. Many, you can use so many other things just as a crowbar. Yeah. I've never seen a crowbar. The only last time I've seen a crowbar was in those Ill- Willard Blend videos. Aye. But then they've got the wee bit, of the, see the hooked bit, and yeah. then it's got a wee divot out of it. Yeah. So I'd be assuming that would be like nails that you'd f- pry oh but then what kind of fucking size of nail would you need a hoke because you just use the claw end of a hammer aye so I'm telling you crowbars are for aye that's for, a good point I've never I I've, I've never, never seen used them. a crow like it's not like my dad had a crowbar always in the, the shed yeah my dad had fucking nunchucks and he didn't have a crowbar <laughs> aye if Eugene doesn't have it yeah if he, it's a it's, if he doesn't, it's a if it's, it's not, not a, a well used weapon if it's not up there aye uh, is it, I have one. I have a note here going. Is it true that French babes don't shave, shave their pits? Shave their pits, yeah. <laughs> By the way, what pissed me off in his bedroom was, uh, what do you call him? The Buzz. Buzz's bedroom. How do uh, Buzz's bedroom was. He was a fan of like every single NBA team. You didn't look at this. That's a good point. Yeah. He had Detroit Pistons. Uh, on the wall, he had J- Michael Jordan's Bulls, famously who hated each other, the Aye. Pistons and Michael Jordan at that time. Uh, and he had like another one on the shelf I saw when uh, old Macaulay was cl- crawling up it. Mad yeah. thing to do. He's got eye because he's got uh, full Jordan cardboard cutout uh, in his room. Yeah, yeah. And Detroit Pistons, I uh, was just like, yeah. Up. I did like when when Kevin breaks into his chest of good shit and the firecrackers are in there. And then when he, when he reads the Playboy, did you see what the Playboy That's said? Great. Do you know? Do you know what? This, this was interesting. When I was reading about the film. The Playboy uh, episode, the Playboy episode, the Playboy issue is the same issue that is in Under Siege, oh, right? Because er- Erica, I... Erica Eleniak, Erica Eleniak, okay, was she, you know she's in Under Siege when she jumps out the cake. Yes, yes. So she was the playmate of the month in that issue because she used to be in Playwatch. Okay. Then the front of that issue of Playboy, it was like broadcaster special, and it was just a <laughs> lot of girls behind news desks. So it must have been. It would be like a broadcaster special British one, where like fucking Lorraine Kelly and oh, shit. Oh <laughs> God, Jesus Christ! An extra grim one is what you're saying. <laughs> um, what do you say? Not a close on any of them. It noise goes. Uh, yeah, what is it? No close on any of them sickening <laughs> yeah 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 and then when he when he lifts up the because that's that that's the line my kids find the funniest in the film where which uh, one? when he goes buzz your girlfriend woof <laughs> uh, yeah 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 yeah. it looked like just buzz it, well, it's, it's just a dude yeah oh, it's dude. a dude yeah, because yeah. Uh, like the direct the the filmmakers went that's far too harsh in a kid's film to just bring a kid look in. how ugly this girl is look at this so they just, they just got a, a, a dude and put him in a wig okay that's fair that's good good idea to do it um, i always notice that in films too when they do that i'm always like imagine being that high fat we need a fucking oh i know no i know we need a monter oh i know and i reckon they barely do up the makeup they're like Aye. can make them feel better because oh well we'll touch we need an ugly cunt but they're like oh well we'll do a good job in makeup and then they're like you barely touched me with the <laughs> Yeah, you better touch with the brush. Are you ready? I think that quite a lot with people in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought it recently, and um, do you know the? Do you know that the Steve Coogan Savile documentary thing? No, no, Alpha Papa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, because I didn't like. I don't want to get this this episode too fucking heavy with this kind of shit, but. Uh, at the end, I didn't think they touched the idea that Savile used to get access to the morgues. 
right? Okay. And they did very briefly do it in the last episode where he, like a woman who's died, a grandmother who's died, gets wheeled in. He sneaks in. And then it cuts away, but you can tell from his movement beforehand, yeah. he's basically footering about with a corpse underneath, yeah. the, underneath the, 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 the sheets. And then another guy comes in and goes, what are you doing in here? Get the fuck out. Do you see... Oh. So that woman is credited at the end. And that that kind of that level of because you're 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 a level above extra in yeah, terms yeah. of acting world. So she'll have an agent. Those phone calls with agents fascinate me. Like I've got a a part for you. This new Steve Coogan. No, it's not Partridge. It's yeah. not. It's not. It's a historical piece. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's really good. You get to act with Steve Coogan. Uh, yeah. No um, lines. No lines. No. 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 No, no lines. <laughs> under a. <laughs> if you under a. <laughs> a tarp <laughs> did you see the the uh the the frank bruno what 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 jimmy saffle did the frank bruno no you know frank bruno the boxer or whatever yeah uh so jimmy saffle and it got him into they were in like a a hospital mm. for whatever mad cunts and, he, and uh jimmy saffle and peter sutcliffe were friends <gasps> good you know, god the murderer and he got him to, and Frank Bruno, he says, basically, he was having a laugh and he was like, here, meet one of the patients. And he got Frank Bruno to take a photograph with Peter Sutcliffe, you know, shaking hands. And then Frank Bruno was like, I wouldn't have took fucking hands if I'd oh known who it was. Oh, my God almighty. And some of the bodies that Sutcliffe had were near Savile's house. Two or three of them are in the general Jeez. area. And I'm like, how much, there's so many different, like, fucking, oh. like, other things that haven't been, I, it, just it, like, the whole Jesus thing Christ. fascinates me how it was like, I saw a clip randomly came up when I was like scrolling through Instagram and it was a clip from a TV show I don't even remember but it must have been late 90s early 2000s where it's Jimmy Savile comes on sits down in what is basically a dentist's chair okay. right has a cigar and then Jack D stands next to him and roasts him he just does a shitload of roast jokes to him it's, I've never seen any, I've never heard of it. I don't know how this has passed me by. But, and Jaddy clearly knows because the jokes are mostly about oh what my. you would make jokes about with Jimmy Savile. God. But this is prime time television. Oh. And Jaddy at that point was arguably the biggest co stand up in the country. Like, this is That's a man a who's night. just about to start live at the Apollo and he's actively just roasting a sex offender. And the audience are fucking howling, laughing at these insinuations. <laughs> Amazing. I, how fucked is that? Like, it's just so fucked when they oh. look back. BBC people must be looking at it going like, we've met a right oil. I know. Uh, we've met a right oil. Listen, balls thank this. God TV has moved beyond that and doesn't have sex offenders on it at all. <laughs> um, certainly not comedians. Um, um, I, I Fuller's face was very funny when he took the, the Pepsi. He was high as fuck. Uh, yeah, 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 he's, he, yeah. He's, he's sugared out his mind before Frank fucking squashes him. Absolutely hazels him. Eh, uh, no. Here's a right. Here's what I want to ask you. Right, theories aside, hmm. do you think it's realistic that they leave Kevin behind? Yeah, you do. I, I think even with even as as good a job they do of explaining where she miscounts the kid because the neighbor okay, comes you know across what? if it's your own kid i suppose no i think it i, I it's it's stretching it i mean there, there, there's notice. definitely it's definitely happened that's what i'll say <laughs> it's happened in your family definitely <laughs> it's definitely but, uh, happened i used to do that was i used to run away oh did you mm. So I'd threaten it. I would never actually have the balls to do it. But I, I, I my mum, like when I was like three years old, as soon as I'd be able to walk, she'd find me up the road. <laughs> then a runner. I, but is that not you, you being curious? That's not you actively I saying, reckon. I'm out of this place. Well, I never really made sense. And then I'd go to my neighbour's house and I would never refuse to leave her, her house. There would be like, a, you know, I'd be grabbing the side of the door like, never. <laughs> You know, I'm bringing me home. And they're like, uh, the, my thing's like, it was like a cartoon. You were like dragging your legs off the, so maybe. I, uh, I didn't realise until I watched it last night that in, when Kevin attacks Buzz because he's lost, he's eating his pizza and all the milkshake gets spilled over all of the passports. I didn't realise that uh, Kevin's dad had thrown out Kevin's ticket. I didn't realise there was a plane ticket within all that shit, all the napkins and stuff that he's thrown out. So that explains I why. I never fucking saw that. Yeah, because because I because that that would explain why when they got to the airport they didn't go the the flight 
crew didn't flag it up because there was no there was no ticket for that seat. So, mm. but then I didn't know that. what a what a what a thing to happen. Two things in a row. But exactly. But also, why well, all the kids that are sitting back in economy class? Have none of them noticed at this point that Kevin isn't about? <laughs> Nobody. This yeah, yeah. I mean, they hate the there kids is so much that they 15. don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they just despise them so much. I've never seen a kid treated this badly <laughs> in a film. What kind of father? Genuinely. What kind of father? What kind of an uncle as well? I was like, look what you've done, you jerk. <laughs> I know, it's terrible. Yeah, like you would shout at a kid like or say something, and sometimes they would be harsher over the top. Uh, out of like reactionary but he he literally just sat there it happened it was only a thing on a pizza it's utterly mental stood up and was just like <laughs> and also <laughs> why is it like the reaction to him being at home firstly is very calm from a lot of them Catherine O'Hara is maybe a bit yeah, yeah, more animated not. the dad very oh. cool about it oh, oh. the uncle and auntie very that's cool. he's like my plan everyone coming. on the plane very cool about it yeah yeah, like, yeah why isn't she hauled off to jail immediately like for our why aren't why aren't people meeting her in paris and going right first of all we need to get your kids safe yeah but then you are going to jail because <laughs> you do not you cannot leave an eight-year-old at home. <laughs> That's not a jail thing, is it? What? Of course, it's absolute child neglect. It's not fucking child neglect. There's no way if that happened in real life, you get arrested for it. You're not even saying arrested. I'm going straight to jail. You're not saying even no. a caution. No. No. Not. It's just a mistake. It's no. That is. Yeah. That is. It's. You get. You get fucking. You can get a charge for leaving your kids. In a hot car and nipping into Aldi, for Christ's sake. Yeah, but, like, that's Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it but that's a hot car, you know, you're going to kill why the doesn't bastard. she... See, when she phones up the cops, she's very blasé about it. The cops she doesn't really explain She just says it. it twice. I'm in Paris, and I've left my, my eight-year-olds at home. They're like, yeah, okay. But she didn't even say I've left them at home. She just said, my son is home. My child is home alone. So that sounds like I've got a rowdy teenager. They're yeah, probably yeah. getting up to some shit. Yeah. Could you send a cop round just to make sure the yeah, place yeah. is still standing? Yeah, yeah. If you go, if you phone... Also, do you know what the, the 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 cop that they talk to is the guy that plays Mr. Heckles in Friends, you know, the guy that lives up the stairs oh, and keeps no, banging never, the broom. Never, no. His name, do you know what his name is? <laughs> the cop's name? Sergeant Ballsack. What? His name's Ballsack. I, never, I just noticed this last his name's Ballsack. <laughs> she knocks. Hey, Ballsack. <laughs> I don't know. I miss that. Sorry, uh, Ballsack. But if she, she... There is no way you would explain it like that to the police. You would go, look, here's what's happened. Through some bizarre uh, misfortune and series of calamities. Yeah. Have. Our entire family <laughs> has come to another country and we have left our youngest child at home in a massive house yeah. on his own. Not a single neighbour. Yeah, not a single neighbour's around. Hasn't answered their phones. Yeah. Nobody. For Christmas, yeah. where everybody would be at home. I, so I'm not just... She says, could you send someone round? I'm not... I want a fucking... I want the army round. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Get, like, get a helicopter up immediately and find out he's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they send one cop. The cop gives a cursory knock, goes, everything looks fine here. And that's it. She never phones up and go, did you send that guy around? I says it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's yeah. no follow-up call. Sweet. No... Cool. Even in the car when you're doing nothing, when John Can Candy gives her a lift the whole way around, around I know. the place, you think you'd be like, well, I have plenty of time now to call this cunt. Uh, um... Do you want to hear the John Candy theory? Yes, I do. There was a theory that John Candy's the devil in this film. <laughs> he's trying to delay him. Just before, when she's trying to reason with, when she's trying to get a, another ticket back to Chicago um, and all the flights are uh, booked up, she says, I would make a deal with the devil to get back to my child. And then Candy just suddenly appears and goes, I heard you get a bit of trouble there, right? The, uh, the devil's music, anyway, he play? Yeah, he's <laughs> at the poker. Fucking hell! Um, there's a there's a again. This is um, I, I I genuinely don't want to ruin this lovely family film. But I think it's you've already passed that. Now. Do you reckon 
she had to suck off any other poker players in the van. Mark. <laughs> because Candy says, maybe we can help each other out here. <laughs> what What else would that mean? How is she helping them in any way? She's bringing nothing to the party. They're bringing the van. They're bringing the entertainment. They're bringing the way home. What's she bringing? What, good chat? That's right. They did. She, he did say that. We could help each other. We could help each other out. That is the that is a sinister line. <laughs> it is to then go into a van. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes, with, yeah, yeah. With twelve musicians who, as he has already said, have been on the road for a long time, <laughs> so haven't seen their wives for a long time. A there's, single. Like there's your, are you saying Vietnam vets, <laughs> poker players? I, I, that is that. It was that line where you go. She's had to suck a couple of them off. Mark, if you had this film. You're trying to tell me that he would have been a sex trafficker. He hired all this to happen. <laughs> it came out. They went to thing. The wife caught on to it. Get out. Had to suck a bunch of poker players off to get home. Yes. <laughs> that's that's your but, home alone. Yeah. PG. <laughs> <laughs> you slapped a PG on it and made the... <laughs> no wonder... No, come on. Macaulay Culkin fucking turned to heroin. <laughs> Imagine the first drafts of the yeah, script. Everybody. We we can't can't sell us to Warner Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> PG. Um, the the last theory, right? This one isn't well. <laughs> it's, it's bad. But okay. Um, do you know there's a theory? I've told. I've already mentioned it that uh, Kevin McAllister grows up to be a serial killer in Saw. <laughs> That's a massive theory on the internet. Right. Because that's his first foray. Oh, for you, fuck's if sake. You, if you look into the traps. Okay, yeah. Well, they're, they're, just... they're not that far. Like, he's just, okay. it's just, Jigsaw is just an extension of what oh, he's done alone. immediately there. That's his first foray in uh, torturing people that have done something wrong. That's is the. And Kevin has grown up in such a bad household and has been mistreated so badly that that's what clicks and snaps in his brain where he goes, I'm going to punish wrongdoers for the rest of my life. That Those are the first two wrongdoers that he's punishing. And from that, he goes, Right, from now on, I'm going to set traps for people wow. and ask them to redeem themselves. Okay, right. Okay. Um, that's a, that's a, out there. So. They don't. So, you, so, so. If no. you put. If you put the guy who plays Jigsaw and Macaulay Culkin, mm. you you and said, "Do you reckon that guy grows up to look to be that guy?" No, I remember the guy who plays Saw. He's in fucking same color hair. <laughs> Chris Rock. <laughs> 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 he got the whole thing wrong. Uh, no, I remember that guy. He was. He wasn't Tobin in Bell, Lost. His name is. Wasn't in Lost, was he? Not no, Lost. No. It was uh, Persons of Interest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't think. That's that's not with without out with the realms of possibility. So you're trying to tell me? Let's just update this. Mm. No, <laughs> the, oh, I'm not saying. I'm not saying trafficker. all. I'm not saying all the theories are all well, in the same well, world. Thank you, because that'd be quite some, a grim world. Some of them might be. That might be only one. But I, yeah, right. But it might be none. It's probably none. It's probably it's just probably a nice, none. It's I probably just it a be. nice family Christmas <laughs> film, which is how you should take it if you are watching it with your children. But you want to put we are here to delve beyond. He did, he, <laughs> the basic they did. Story when, they, when they put the kid up on the fuck, when they when they finally catch him and put him up on the clothes thing, they do threaten to blowtorch a kid, yeah, and, and eat, eat his fingers, yeah. They said he was going to eat his fingers. I was like, oh, so Pesci bites him in real life in that, does he? That's how they get that because Pesci, um, was. Pesci, just class. <laughs> As Macaulay's he, first taste of drugs yeah, got yeah, into yeah. his system. <laughs> but he, uh, to, to get the part, like to, to absolutely nail the part and to get the relationship between himself and Kevin as a character, he would never, ever speak to Macaulay Culkin on set and would actively ignore him so that he would have this fear in terms of the acting. And then when he did that, to get that shocked look in his face, he wasn't told, actually bite the kid. But apparently, he properly fucking chomped down on Macaulay Culkin's <laughs> finger, and that's Just why he's a fucking that's why psycho. Culkin's like, oh, again. he's a psychopath. Yeah. He had to get told. See how he does that uh, almost dastardly and motley thing whenever he gets hurt and he goes, "I don't fucking shit." Whatever. He came up with that because he couldn't stop swearing. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not I, I never realized this about Joe Pesci. It's not just in films. 
that he swears a lot. Apparently in real life, he cannot stop cursing. He's, he, he's basically Tommy from Goodfellas all the time. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, And this yeah. wouldn't work. So they said, you're, he can't. He swears in his music. Yeah, he does, he does, yeah. Oh, that's right, Christmas. He's got a yeah, Christmas yeah, album. Yeah, so he does, fucking yes. I can't believe it. I fucking even never put that together. It's all about beating women, but it's a Christmas album. But like, <laughs> someone needs to do this. That's a good thing. Like, I wish we were better at like, Photoshop and film editing and all that kind of shit. Someone, if someone could take the lines from Goodfellas when Tommy's angry and dub them into when he's just been blowtorched and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, that'd be, it. like the, the Billy Bats bit, if he'd just been blowtorched and he's going, you motherfucking <laughs> macho, you <laughs> cocksucking motherfucker. Like, that would be exactly. That would be funny. It would, it would work exactly yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. He he acts very well going up the slippy, st- uh, the ice steps. Oh, yeah. I understand that you can do that and you do it yourself, but to that level, because he is going to face plant at all times. Aye. Aye, that can't be easy, that physical. No, that yeah. That amount of physical acting. What age is he? Like, there. And he must that, be in his... Uh, maybe he's not too bad. Maybe. 40s, probably. Uh, 50, early 50s. I think Joe Pesci's older than he is. I he's older. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon Joe Pesci is older than he is. <laughs> What do you mean by that, Ryan? <laughs> Just as, all right? Um, uh, the last thing I found very funny about this when I was reading about it, um, Macaulay Culkin, st- because I, I, I totally, I, I didn't realise that kids would have stunt doubles. Because obviously, like, <laughs> when they did the Goonies, like, you can't that. get those kids to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like protect le- the face. Legally, you can't ask a child to do stunts. So as we mentioned. So they need a stunt double. Fuck, Macaulay Culkin's stunt double for home is a 30-year-old man. You're fucking kidding me. 30-year-old guy. you fucking kidding me. I'd, honest, like, he, so they would put him in Kevin's clothes. But, like, Just that's, a small 30-year-old man. That's unbelievable, because no harm. I would know the difference between a child and a... Yeah, but, I mean, it's not a, so bad. A, it's a not little so bad. person. I'm going to go back and watch it, actually, because apparently you can really see it when he does the zip wire to the <laughs> treehouse. Because you can't really see it when he does the... Because the two, the two scenes the stunt double come in for are the zip wire scene and when he does the sledging down the stairs and goes outside. Now, you can't see it in that because obviously it's from behind. He's got all the winter gear on. But apparently in the zip wire, you can probably see that it's just, a, it's just an adult in kids' like, who, Who's that? <laughs> Where'd the kid go? <laughs> One of the elves is coming. Uh, um, I love the way they, you know, they have the wet bandit thing and they, they keep, you know, it's very funny when he's, when he's like going like, uh, you know, it's like, now we know exactly every house you hit. Yeah. And he's like, you fucking. Yeah, like, yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. he kicks into the thing. That was great. But what would you, like, when I was a kid, by the way, I thought cat burglars were just people who stole cats. <laughs> I genuinely, like, it was that, and I thought Hitler and Charlie Chaplin were the same person. <laughs> you know, I was like, he yeah. did all that. That and, one's understandable. Yeah, cat, it, but so I went, yeah. well, it was. It was until I saw. Him. I was like, imagine doing all that and still tap dancing. <laughs> uh, but but I, but it, but cat burglars thing. But the Colin card thing is um, is what would you, what would your Colin card be if you if I, I was to you would you throw people off? I'd leave a core CD. <laughs> like, what the fuck's he doing? Can't, this? can't be that bad. <laughs> Not David Gray's White Ladder. <laughs> the White Bandit thing is actually my calling card whenever I pump your mouth. That is it, I. <laughs> the White Bandit. Leave her absolutely Which one's the fucking <laughs> dripping? <laughs> Fuck's sake. Bandit People as well. Wading Bandit as well. Just makes you feel like you're going right for the home. <laughs> you're tearing your way through the neighborhood. Um, um, do you not? Uh, do you not think the 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 Marley? Storyline's quite nice. No, it's an old... Uh, kind of. I used to. And then for whatever reason this time, maybe I was just feeling like a thing, but it, it didn't get me. In my head, I was just like, why is this kind of just opening up all of a sudden in a church to a kid? Yeah. Why is it also like, why are you here? Why is Kevin there? Huh? It's because it's a place of safety. Like, it's because he was so... He was like, hey, my family's gone. Yeah, but... I know what you mean. Also, you know what annoyed me? When he, 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 he hides in the nativity scene, he puts the cloak over. Mm-hmm. I'm like, they don't have real cloaks. It's always like the statue is, the cloak's on the statue. It's a statue of a cloak. 
He takes a statue. Oh, yes, yeah, so And he, he takes does. the cloak and goes. And I'm like, uh, yeah. why would it have a real cloak on it? You're right. You know, you'd be ripping he the plastic. Have, <laughs> he should have pretended to be Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. an eight-year-old Jesus. <laughs> stand on the stand on the nail on two feet. <laughs> um, and that, I, I, I quite like the... It's I, like, it, it was all right. You just open up. I was, in my head, I was just like, go to therapy. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> you know. But uh, he was, tra- as, they, as the young'uns would say, he was trauma dumping on the kid. Is that what it's called? Trauma dumping? Trauma dumping. Um, no, I was going to say, there, I have a few other little small notes. First of all, I have a weird, weird song choice when he leaves the church. It sounded more like a Halloween jingle to me. Oh, yeah. That, 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 my kids have actually said that's a creepy song. I, thought, I, I was like, that's a Halloween jingle. I'm with your children on this one. Yeah, they think that, that, that a lot of the music in Home Alone is quite creepy. I thought that was creepy. I thought that was. They also new. think the song, and it is quite creepy. The have you heard the song "Carol of the Bells"? Carol of the bells, ring oh, and the bells, yeah, yeah. Oh, and the bells. Where are my bells? Where yeah, the fuck yeah, my yeah. bells? Who's take my bells? Yes, that, I absolutely agree. That was in the church. A, yeah, that's a creepy, creepy yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you feel like you're about to get murdered, but yeah, yeah. hovering yeah. over you with yeah. a knife. Oh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Omen. Yeah, there's so many music, yeah. yeah. I've also got written if it's three Tic Tacs. Remember, he gives him three Tic Tacs to yeah. fake Santa Claus. Yeah. Imagine if they were ecstasy. <laughs> it's like, fuck you, kid. Maybe they are. And, and that's why he's all, there's my theory. They were pills, and that's why he comes back all fucking pumped up, going like, no, I need to defend my house. Oh, now you see. It's easy when you start coming up with these, isn't it? <laughs> he's on gear. <laughs> he's on some sort. He's on pills. He's coming up big time. He, goes, he tries to make a mac and cheese. He doesn't even eat it. He doesn't, no. Because he's on pills. Why would you eat a mac and cheese? Uh, why would you? But he tans <laughs> he the milk. A, he tans the milk. Also, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, my main one about my thing that pissed me off the most. First of all, two things the robbers do. Number mm-hmm. one, he knows when all the Christmas lights are going on. Mm-hmm. To what end? Oh, look at this. It's 657. Aye, seven. because that's, that's because... But then he, because he's trying to prove to Marv that everyone's away. Because he's gone round and done the. Okay, right, right. He's, he's cased all the joints. Right, you're right. Apart from. Right, okay, that's fine. Here, explain this one. If a, if you're going to rob this neighborhood, why do they keep going like, oh, we'll come back at nine when it's dark? And I'm like, I mean, three in the morning. Yeah, that's true. 9 a.m. Fucking Carnation Street yeah. still on. What are you doing? That is true. Aye. Aye. <laughs> and also, nine o'clock. <laughs> they also scope a lot of the places out in the middle of the day. <laughs> yeah, Surely but... you shouldn't be anywhere near that area yeah, in the yeah. middle of the day. He keeps for... going like, we might get spotted here. And I'm like, you, you're already yeah, doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, know, I know what you mean. I yeah, yeah. Mean. Nine o'clock killed me. I was like, yeah. right, 3 a.m. Nine o'clock. Fucker, the kid. We have to come back when the kid's still awake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come asleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, the uh, do you know who the guy that plays the Santa Claus is? No. Who else he's in? He's the guy at Groundhog Day that Bill Murray meets every morning when he comes out of his room. And he <laughs> goes, "I have to see the Groundhog." <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Fuck's sake. Um, Jesus, I, that, that's a, that's a good spot. Yeah. Um, I've got what else uh, have I got here? I've got no. I've got most of these done. Do you know? No, I actually have written this in because I thought it was great. There's one shot, like actual shot in the film. I was like, that's an unbelievably good shot. Mm. And it's when Pesci's got arrested and they, they the car's coming out of the thing, but it's facing that way. And the car reverses and it's just him, you know, uh, in the back of the thing. And he's looking. Great scene and a great look. But that's a fucking perfect. That is nice. That is nice. Eh? The, the, like just the perfect shot of the window. That uh, is I, when he reverses in, I go, that, that, that's somebody showing off. And you wouldn't aye. think about it in a kid's film. That really. is good, actually. Aye. Yeah, I, oh, thought I, totally that was, I thought that was good. By the way, and another thing, the last one I have, um, uh, two things. I think it would be a better ending if when he walks towards the window, and he looks out, and the old man's actually murdering his own son with a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't resolve the differences. <laughs> or he opens the curtains like that, oh and it's the old God. man, he's looking in, having a wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how, um, did, how did he know to turn up at the neighbor's house to save him? Has he been watching all this shit I think, I think unfold he, and not? I think what they kind of hint at is the f- the way I was complaining, like, he didn't say anything. He's probably like, why the fuck is this kid running around alone here? Aye. He probably kept an eye out. He probably went into the neighborhood and saw it. Aye. Must have checked. And he was like, these are all fucked. And, yeah. he, and he wandered in. 
He must have been watching eventually. He must have been like, that's just too weird. Because it did co- it did happen that evening when he did yeah, run exactly, into yeah. So I would say he's probably kind of went. There's another wild theory that he's Kevin from the future. <laughs> I, I don't buy that one. That one's, no. I'm going to. Um, the last thing, I don't know why this reminded me, right? But see when he's in, um, when Kevin goes to the, the supermarket and uh, he's buying all these groceries and stuff. And uh, the tell uh, person says to him, are you here all by yourself? And he basically goes, ma'am, I'm eight years old. Do you honestly think I'd be out shopping on my own? And he goes, I don't think so, right? It reminded me of one of my f- my favourite jokes of all time, right? <laughs> I don't know if you've heard this, right? Um, postman goes to the door. Right. Okay. Uh, door opens. The kid's standing there in a smoking jacket with a cigar, a glass of brandy, holding on to a prostitute. The postman says, Is your mum or dad in? And he goes, Does it fucking look like it? That's <laughs> 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 so stupid. That's <laughs> great. Does <laughs> it fucking look like it? Uh, you know, there's another thing just before you fucking think. They don't, know, the family. Or the parents never know that any of it happened. How do you mean? He cleans up. Oh! They get arrested. They arrive in. The house is fine. And nobody mentions the fact that he just goes, ah, I just did the shit. So he grows up. They grow up thinking that nothing happened. That's a good point. Because he never... How does he clean the place up? He cleans the fucking place up. He just wrecks the brother's bedroom. Buzz screams down because he's wrecked his bedroom. He can't cl- fix the shelves, like. So he doesn't. He doesn't bother cleaning up Buzz's room, but he cleans up. He the fact, cleans up the absolute right. massacre that he's caused the night before, and nobody knows. He, he's going to drop that at a Christmas dinner when he's like yeah. twenty-five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, By yeah. the way, remember the timing? Well, two people try to murder me. Yeah, I incinerated their heads with yeah. little torches. The the thing saved me. I have f- Even that shovel guy might mention to the parents. Ah, exactly, I. And you'd be like, what happened? I have a feeling that whole episode would never, ever get mentioned again in the house. Yeah, like, yeah It yeah. is one of those things that they would just yeah. go, let's yeah. just never talk about that yeah, Christmas. Yeah. Remember that time? We're not going to talk about it until we also make the same mistake next year. Yeah, yeah, When yeah. we go to Florida and you end up in New York. That's the... That's the one with the Irish one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Fricker? What do you call yeah, her? The woman, Fricker? Yeah, the woman that looks like Pierce Morgan. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's so, <laughs> so accurate. Devastating. Um, right, that's Home Alone. Um, I, did, I apologize if I've made this you have. distasteful for you. It, it was not my intention. It was just, I, I think there are dark he was undertones. Like, he's a sexual trafficker. Yes. She sucked off everyone to get home in a van. Yeah. Almost, and he I, turns into a serial killer and saw. I feel. He gets the taste of. I feel the her having to suck off the poker players is actually probably the most distasteful theory I've given. Yes, I think I, that's I think that's worse than the dad being an international criminal. I don't. I do too for some reason. Yeah, it's bizarre, isn't it? It's I don't know. That, that, it it I, doesn't I, make as much sense, you know, because no. technically he's trafficking people that are probably going to be doing that. Yeah. But it just seems worse. It just the fact that it's John Candy, I think. Yeah, I was about to go. The fact that it's Catherine yeah. O'Hara. <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were on two different nights. <laughs> um, right, we're going to be back with a Christmas film again next week. Ryan, what are we watching? Oh, which one's next week? Daddy's Home 2. Is it Daddy's Home 2 next week? Yes, Super. I think we're going to go Daddy's Home 2. and then Will we just tell them what we're going to do? Or yes. We keep it you know surprise? what? Let's... I think we should tell them because they might have chances to watch right. it more over the months. We won't do this for other films, right? No. But since it's the Christmas yeah. ones. So we have... Daddy's Home 2 <laughs> next week. Yeah. Then on Christmas week, it's going to be It's a Wonderful Life. Yes. And then to finish off, the absolute abomination that is Love Actually. That's the four. <laughs> that's the four. For, that's I can't the, wait for Love that's Actually. That's the quartet. La- Love Actually is the film I still complain about the most. So, uh, like, that's yeah. going to be... That's going to be a long episode. That's going to be a three-hour special. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I even have trivia about <laughs> Love Actually <laughs> that I know. This is the going to be the film where you come with the theories. Oh, like... but I fucking... It's unbelievable. <laughs> Such a horror show in a film. <laughs> Uh, right um, yeah uh, keep listening keep sharing all that kind of stuff yeah please uh, do tour tickets all on the usual kiss shit roast battles is going to be big on yes this good, coming good. Monday well, this coming Monday yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It, isn't it Monday I think it is yes yeah, sorry whatever that is Monday it is <laughs> I fucking think Monday the 11th I think, I think it is yeah, yeah. it's on the 11th yeah. Yeah. yes uh, that's this moment Monday we're doing each other yeah we're, we're doing each other we're sh- 
shagging each other. We're on stage. Yeah. We'll probably fucking record we've, one after or before. We've taken the literal roast. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're actually... <laughs> I've written on. I should need to fucking. I've not read the fucking thing. Jesus Christ! No, anyway. um, but we'll we'll get there. Uh, we'll get there. I'm sure we'll have stuff to say. Um, yeah, keep uh, leaving the five star reviews, all that shit. Uh, but uh, aye, this has been a lot of fun. We'll see you next week for Daddy's Home Two. Bye bye. Bye bye.